Shalawam Lakam Basham Yahawashai Hamashayak. Numbers chapter 30. Verses 4. Numbers chapter 30. Verse 4. A woman and her vow. When a woman, Salaklia, also, when a woman voweth a vow unto Yahweh and bindeth herself by a bond, being in her father's house in her youth. Wa and Asha female Kaya the Dar that vows or shall vow Nadar a vow La Yahawa to Yahawa Wa Asarha and binding and she binds Asar herself Babayath in the house Abba Yaha of her father Ba in Nair Yaha in her Nairhood in her youth Wa Asha Kaya the Dar Nadar Nadar is a vow, an agreement with Yahweh to do or not do certain things, usually ending with a payment to the priests. Examples are found in Leviticus chapter 22. A Nadar is also a general agreement to do or not do certain things with the validity of the, of the vow being expressed by stating it with the name of Yahweh. This type of vow can be found in 1st Ezra chapter 8 verse 50 and 1st Ezra chapter 4. There is also a vow which includes children being the child of their parents or of a parent's vow, which may or may not be a reference to marriage. Proverbs chapter 31 verse 2 gives an example of this type of nadar or vow. Asha, female, Kaya, that, the dar, shall vow, nadar, vowing certainly vows, la Yahawa to Yahawa, wa asarha, and binding herself, asar, with a bond, babayath, in the house, Abiyaha, Abayaha, in her father's house, meaning that the female, the subject of the verse, is in her father's house, which is a euphemism for being under the authority of her father. Ba na iriyaha, meaning in her youth precisely meaning in her young womanness now 
Naira, Nairiyaha. Biblically and historically dealt with the time of the age of having monthly cycles moving toward physical and mental maturity. We can see this with the paleo letters that are used for na'ir ha, ha being the feminine suffix and na'ir or na'ir being the root word, the first root word the first letter of the root word is nawan, noon, which literally means fish, denoting multiplicity as well as movement. The second letter is iyan or ayin, denoting the eye of the body. The third letter is raash, denoting the head of the body. With this, we can see that the body is moving and can be seen with the physical eye that mental processing in the head is maturing and is changing physical and mental eye and the head is going through fish, movement, ocean, exploration, development, multiplicity, changes, visually seen with the eye, and also mentally detectable and mentally um, cognizant and mentally reflective. This is the same word we see for a young man Nair. For the female, it has the female suffix Nair, Nairah, with the ha on the end. Now, a synonym or a word that is closely related to this word is the word Alma, which is a damsel or a young woman. Please refer to Proverbs chapter 30, verse 19, Isaiah chapter 7, verse 14, and Genesis chapter 24, verse 43, for examples of this word, Alma, uh, being used in the context of marriage and intimacy. Which Genesis 24 represents Rebecca. Isaiah chapter 7 represents the wife of Isaiah that had a child for him. And Proverbs chapter 30 verse 19 represents the relationship of a man and a woman in general together, which cannot be known by other people. The standard age of natural reproductive interest, which is also called the biological clock, is the age of 16 to 17. The standard age of natural repetitive reproductive interest is 16 to 19. With the age of 18 being the age of majority in all ancient and modern societies. The example that we can refer to can be found in the book of Numbers, chapter 1. Verse 3. 
from 20 years old and upward all that are able to go forth to war in Yasharala, ye shall number them by their hosts, even thou and Aharan. Maban Sha'ir Salaklia, Maban Ishariam, and son of tens, meaning twenty, of the sons of twenty. So this is the son of twenty, Shana, twenty years, Wa Ma'ila, the ones that twenty and upward. Kal all tzaba'a, all yatzaa, all that go out tzaba'a to war by Yashadala in Israel, da pakwadwa, you shall number them a thumb, you shall number plural a thumb them la tzaba'a thumb for the war. For warfare, Atha you wa Aharan you and Aaron. So here we see la tza abatham, okay. For the warfare, to go out to war, we see that the age was set at Ishariam, which is twenty. So here we see that the age of majority for a man being able to go to war in ancient Israel was 20 years old. From this we know that the female matures at a greater rate than the male. So at 18 years old, the female would actually be more mature, more developed than the man would be at 20 years old. So we can reasonably assess based on biology, based on historical facts, based on, most importantly, the examples reflected in the Torah, in the Tanakh itself, that a female that was the age of 18 and over would not, by any ancient culture, have been considered to be a Naida, a young woman, she would have been considered to be a full-fledged female woman available for marriage. So, if we have a female, according to the letter and the spirit of the law, that does not fall within a certain age range, and that is not within her father's house or under his authority, this female would not qualify by Torah to be under this law. What law? The law of and her father heareth the, her vow or her bond wherewith she hath bound her soul and her father holdeth his peace at her then all her vows shall stand, and every bond wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. But if her father disallow her in the day that he heareth, none of her vows or none or of her bonds wherewith she hath bound her soul shall stand. And Yahweh will forgive her because her father disallowed her so here we see that the father does have the power to make stand or to disallow the vow of a daughter however we must be cautious in not adding to the letter of the law to the spirit of the law to the text of the law the father does not according to the Torah have such authority one over a daughter which is not in her youth 
which can firmly be established in any culture and by biblical standards, not to be 18 and over, and a daughter which is not in her father's house, meaning under her father's authority. We cannot make the law become something that is not written in the law. We can neither add to the law nor take away from the law. So we cannot disavow or we cannot give any person the authority to take away the vow made by a grown woman, which is over the age of Naira and quite likely over the age of Ailma. We cannot give any person the authority to renounce or to disavow or to undo any bond or any vow made by a woman who does not fall within this category. Father's house in her youth. I would urge everyone to research the word Naira to be clear on exactly what age bracket, what social group of female the Torah is addressing. There's no clarity within a lot of people's minds, which may lead them to try and establish doctrines for women that are not Naira as it pertains to a Nadar or a bond or a promise or a vow. And they may try to assign authority to the father to nullify the vow. But Yahweh has given no father any such authority if the daughter is not in her youth and is not in her father's house, meaning under her father's authority. If the woman goes back to her father's house and she is not in her youth, meaning she is over, she is 18 and over, the law still does not apply to her. Why? Because she is no longer in her youth. The law is very specific. The law is very detailed. And the law uses key words in the Hebrew that most of us are not familiar with, which leads us to make a conclusion which is not based on what we read in the text. All conclusions of the Torah must be based on the context within the Torah and the use of the words throughout the rest of the Tanakh to give us a definition which is consistent with how the word is used and how it compares to other words that are related to that particular word. And this is how we gain a better understanding intellectually of Taurat, of the Torah. However, it is only through Yahweh and the Holy Spirit that we gain a better understanding of the Taurat, of the Torah. In the name of and through the power of Yahweh Shai Hamashayak, the anointed Savior and the Messiah of Yasharala. Please take heed and let all things be done decently and in order. Shemai Yasharala, Yahweh Alahayanawa, Yahweh Akad.